power. You know who they are. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will be with Brother Griffith, that you will help him and guide him, as well as Brother Dave and Mrs. Clayton. We thank you, Lord, for hearing these prayers because we pray in the only name possible. In our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. all of God's people said amen. amen we thank God for you and we thank God for your presence in this place today I think we were having some technical difficulties but we are up now amen we praise God for that uh, I want to uh, ask Miss Barbara if you'll go ahead and read that letter so we can put some emphasis sometimes we don't realize how blessed we are until we understand how less blessed some others are. Amen. Amen. Dear pastors and church leaders, for over 109 years, the cooperative mission work at the Baptist Fellowship Center has provided aid and assistance to individuals and families in need. Supported by Central District, District Baptist Association, Louisville Regional Baptist Association, and Kentucky Baptist Convention, and we provide help to needy people nearly 12,000 times each year with food, clothes, personal care items, school supplies, financial assistance, prescription drug assistance, and holiday programs. The time has arrived for us to begin preparing to provide help for those in need this 2023 holiday season. This year, we'll partner again with our local Dare to Care agency to provide 100 families with meals for Thanksgiving and 100 families with meals for Christmas. We are pre-ordering ready-packed holiday food boxes with a canned ham and enough food to feed a family of four for a minimum cost of $24 per box. We are asking each church to sponsor at least 10 families or whatever number of families you can provide a holiday meal for this 2023 Thanksgiving and Christmas season. Also, if you have members in your church that need a food box, please notify Miss Kim at the Baptist Fellowship Center at 502-774-2734, extension 100. With the number of food boxes you will need, the church name, and your church contact person's information. We appreciate all the support you contribute to the lifeline of the Baptist Fellowship Center. Thank you in advance, the Reverend Matthew Eastmeiser, Jr., Executive Director of Missions for the Fat Baptist Fellowship Center. Amen. Thank you so very much. I know on last year, although we were asking for each church to sponsor 10 families. Uh, I think we sponsored 20 families on last year. And I'm gonna ask us to do the same this year. If we would lead the way and sponsor at least 20 families for Christmas, and uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, I, I don't know any of us here at Beargrass uh, is concerned or worried about whether or not we are going to have a Thanksgiving meal. But there are folks who are, and we are blessed uh, to be able uh, to have uh, Thanksgiving and not be that concerned. Uh, if any, any member of Bagrats don't have a Thanksgiving meal, I don't know about it, I'll put it that way. But nobody that I know that's a member of this church uh, is, is dealing with not having Thanksgiving or a Christmas meal. So let us be a blessing to someone else. Beargrass has always come through when we gather together to meet a need that becomes a blessing to somebody else. And I'm asking that we would support 20 families, I think that's $480, amen. And Sister Smizer and I will give the first $100 towards this effort. We will give the first $100. You do what the Lord leads you to do. 
but uh, I think we have not because we ask not. And uh, if you always hold your hand like this, amen, nothing goes out of it, but nothing comes in either. And when you do this, then you release, and then God replenishes. So, again, we will lead the way with the first $100 towards this effort. I'm asking the church to give another 380 that's 480 amen i already got we already got 200 of the 480 that we need come on amen. now we say we if you're blessed then you are blessed to be a blessing amen amen, amen. all right uh I, I think we want to continue to keep uh our youth in mind those that are in college we want to continue i think i'm getting it's about time for us to uh, Sister Smizer and I to send uh, some cash out monies. Amen. Amen. They've been there a little while now. And so whatever little money they had, they, they don't probably spend it up. Amen. And uh, you might want to consider doing the, the same. It's on the screen, uh, the cash apps to uh, our youth who are in college. Amen. Amen. And we want you to, to think of them as uh, you realize the blessings that God has blessed you with. Let us keep in mind those who are sick and shut in, those who are on our prayer list, those who said, pray for me. Amen. 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 I think that's all that uh, I have. If I'm not forgetting anything and nothing is eluding us, amen. Come on, praise team.
amen and amen. He certainly is excellent in all the earth. Amen. We honor God. We praise him. We lift his most holy and righteous name. If you would be so kind, make your way again to the Old Testament book of Isaiah. The Old Testament book of Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. When you find it, say, I got it. If you don't have it, say, I'm looking for it. Isaiah chapter 40. I will be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. If you have a different version, the words might be slightly different, but the meaning and the message is the same. Uh, please allow me to start reading at verse number 12, and I'm going to read several verses actually down to verse number 26 for the clarity of the content as we come to you with this last portion of the series entitled, If God Puts You on Hold, Don't Hang Up. Beginning at verse number 12, we find these words. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, measured heaven with a span, and calculated the dust of the earth in a measure, weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance. Who has directed the spirit of the Lord or as his counselor has taught him? With whom? Did he take counsel? And who instructed him and taught him in the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding? Behold, the nations are as a drop in a bucket and are counted as the small dust on the scales. Look, he lifts up the owls as a very little thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor its beasts sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him are as nothing. And they are counted by him less than nothing and worthless. To whom then will you liken God? Or what likeness? Will you compare to him? The workman molds an image. The goldsmith overspreads it with gold. And the silversmith casts silver chains. Who is too impoverished for such a contribution? Chooses a tree that will not rot. He seeks for himself a skillful workman to prepare a carved image that will not totter. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundation of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. He brings the princesses to nothing. He makes the judges of earth useless. Scarcely shall they be planted. Scarcely shall they be sown. Scarcely shall their stock take root in the earth when he will also blow on them and they will wither and the whirlwind will take them away like stubble. To whom then? Will you liken me, or to whom shall I be equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these things, who brings out their host by number. He calls them all by name, by the greatness of his might. 
and the strength of his power, not one is missing. Pray with me, God, how we love you, we adore you, we magnify your most holy and righteous name. Here we are again, God, just a few of your believing children with our heads bowed down, but our hearts lifted up towards glory. Again, God, as we do each and every Lord's Day, we pray that you would bind the devil right now. Don't allow him to interfere nor interrupt with this time that you have preordained for us to be together. And God, if we have anything in our hearts that should not be there, I pray that you would move it as far as the east is from the west. And then, God, give me your preacher what I need for this preaching moment. We ask it in the mighty, miraculous, and matchless name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Uh, as we come to the close as we come to the third portion of the series of sermons entitled if God puts you on hold don't you hang up we want to focus this morning from the perspective of if God puts you on hold don't hang up because he is, I am. Okay, I need to say that. If God puts you on hold, don't hang up. Because he is, I am. Uh, on part one of the series, if God puts you on hold, don't hang up. We talked from... Uh, the last verse from verse 31 that says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. We told you that we were uh, starting from the end of chapter 40, that we were starting with the end in mind. We told you three things in that first uh, series. We told you don't hang up. Uh, work while you wait. We told you don't hang up because you know who you're waiting on. And we told you don't hang up because the wait is worth waiting for. And then on last Sunday, we looked at how we got uh, to the to they that wait upon the Lord when uh, we told you if God puts you on hold, don't hang up by letting you know that you got to go through it to get to it, yeah. Uh, we 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 told you uh, three things in that, and that is number one, God has not abandoned you. Number two, God is still a good God, even though we have not been obedient uh, children. And then number three, if God puts you on hold, don't hang up because God wants to use you for His glory. Uh, but now today, uh, this text is telling to teach us that if God puts you on hold, don't hang up because when we realize that because he is, I am, then you and I will get an understanding that we uh, should never hang up if it's God that puts us on hold. Because he is, I am, ought to help you and I see that whatever the situation, whatever the problem, whatever you're dealing with, you hang on, you hold on, and don't you hang up because God's got a plan for your life. Uh, you need to know that if God puts you on, on hold, don't hang up because when you realize because he is, that makes you whoever you are. You wouldn't be who you are if it wasn't for him being who he is. You wouldn't do what you're able to do if it's not for him being who he is. You wouldn't be able to think, to run, to walk, to talk, or to have your being if you did not understand that it's because he is who he is. Because the 
the Bible teaches us, us that it is in God that we live, that we breathe, that we move, that we have our being. One of the songwriters kind of put it uh, this way. The songwriter penned these words, O oh Lord my God, when I'm in awesome wonder, consider all the world thy hands have made. I see the stars, I, I hear the rolling thunder, the power throughout the universe displayed. And then I imagine in my spiritual imagination that this songwriter threw his head back or her, her head back and said, then sings my soul, my savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great Thou art. And then they went on and they pinned another verse. And in that verse, they said, When through the woods and forest glaze I wonder and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountains grandeur and see the brook and feel the gentle breeze. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art how great thou art when we understand how great god really is even though we are on hold we won't hang up we won't hang up because uh you're on hold for god who is the creator uh, yeah, if you're writing, that's point one, number one. Uh, because he is, I am, and I'm on hold, but I'm on hold uh, for the God who is the creator. I'm in your Bible. Look at verse number 12. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, measured heavens with a span, and calculated the dust of the earth uh, in a measure, weighed the mountains in scale and the hills uh, in a balance? That writer is talking about the magnificent of God. Do you know who your God really is? Do you know he is the creator of all things? I think at some point in time, you got to ask yourself, uh, as the writer pins here in Isaiah, uh, who, who, who is God that he was able uh, to create a universe like this? Who is this God uh, that is able to set a sun uh, and make it shine to give heat and light? that has never called in sick, uh, uh, to have a moon that has never not showed up, to have uh, stars by the million but uh, and know every one of them and uh, know each of their name. Who is this God that made somebody like you and me that we can lay down and go to sleep but yet our heart keeps on beating, our lungs keeps on functioning and the blood continues to war and run warm in our our veins. Who is this uh, creator that uh, made birds that have the ability uh, to fly and don't need you and me to have the ability to eat? Who is uh, this God that creates a fish that can swim and never has to come out of the water and able to continue to be existing uh, in its own habitat? Who is this God, I tell you, that makes oxygen that uh, you're able to take into your lungs and then carbon comes out of your lungs but each and every breath keeps you living each and every day who is this God uh, uh, that already thought about you before you was a twinkle in your daddy's eye uh, 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 you was uh, uh, a, 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 a in your mama's who is this who is this God you own hold because you're waiting on the creator. Now, if you, if, if you are even thinking about hanging up and the one that you own hold for is the one that woke you up this morning and started you on your way, I would suggest that you keep on holding on. <laughs> uh, if you own hold for the one that makes 
sure that you got up clothed and in your right mind, I would suggest that you keep on hanging on because you might want to think about because you're on hold. If you hang up, then it might make God a little upset that he puts you on hold and you didn't have the patience to wait until he picked up uh, on the other end that he says, okay, since you feel that way, then let me feel some kind of a way and I'm going to stop the air that you're breathing. I'm going to stop the blood that's running uh, warm in your veins. Uh, I'm going to make sure that uh, when you lay down then you're not going to have the ability to get up because I'm the one that gives life and I'm the one that says when death comes, can I help somebody to understand? I don't care what the doctor say, you ain't going to die until God says so. I don't care what your condition is, you ain't going to die until God says so. I don't care what your infirmity might be, but you ain't going nowhere until God so says so. And then on the flip side of that script, I don't care if you got a hundred doctors and a whole lot of ventilators, if God said your time is up, guess what, sweetheart? Your time is up. You on hold for God who is the creator of God. Isaiah is saying that obviously and evidently uh, had everything in mind when he made you. He had the things that you would do, the things that uh, you will become, the things that you will deal with. And here's the caveat uh, that Isaiah is helping you and me to see is when he says, who has directed the spirit of the Lord or, or, or as uh, who has directed the spirit of the Lord or as his counselor has taught him? Who taught God to be God? Who, 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 who taught God to know what justice is supposed to be? Who did God call up and say, hey, I need a little knowledge on how to fix what's going on in Smiles' life? Uh, who, who is it that taught him uh, uh, how to be an understanding, uh, a kind and considerate, a loving and compassionate God? Who do you think uh, taught him uh, in the path of justice? Uh, uh, some of us ought to be glad that he understands justice to the point that he sent mercy instead of justice. Some, some of us need to understand that we are a grace case and we got mercy on our side because if God sent justice our way, way then none of us would be here right now who taught uh, him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding uh isaiah is simply trying to say that uh, you need to understand who you own hold with you own hold with the creator you own hold on the one that spoke uh, and uh, this whole world came into existence the one that spoke and trees came up and the fruit trees had their own seeds within their fruit so that the, the trees would never not have a seed simply because God created it that way. Who told God how uh, to do that? Who told God how to grow some grass that allow it to turn brown uh, in the fall and winter and then that same grass comes by green in the spring and in the summer? Who told God uh, how to make a cloud go over the ocean and draw up from the ocean water and then move that cloud uh, over to your house so that your flowers could be watered? Who? Uh, do you know who is on the other end and you trying to hang up on God? You trying to act like you upset with God. You trying to act like God ain't moving fast enough for you. Do you realize who it is? So not only, not only, not, 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 not only uh, you need to know who you own hold for, who is the creator. Uh, you have to also know in the second place, uh, your own hold for God who is the incomparable. He's incomparable. Uh, in other words, ain't nobody like my God. One songwriter put it like this. He said, I'm glad that man didn't make the sunshine. For he may not let it shine on me. I'm glad that man didn't make the raindrops because he may not water the grain. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad that God 
made me. Is there anybody in here besides me that's glad that God made you? That's glad that man didn't make you? That's glad that God not only made you, but he created in you what he wanted you to be. He made you just like he wanted you to be. That's why you all not be worried or concerned about being like somebody else. God don't need you to be like somebody else. If the truth be known, if God wanted you to be like somebody else, he would have made you that somebody else. But God made you who you are so you can be who God would have you to be so you can do what God has you to do. Everybody in the sight of God uh, is somebody. Yeah, yeah you, you, you need to know your own hold for God who is the incomparable. I'm still in your Bible. Look at verse 18. Uh, to whom will you liken God? Uh, I mean, who is it that, that you can put up beside God? That's why God said uh, uh, that I'm a jealous God. Do you really understand what God meant when God said, I am a jealous God? Let me try to help you see that a little clearer. Uh, you see, when we try to make uh, stuff that uh, we create to match up or to sit beside the creator, then God said, that makes me upset, that makes me mad, that makes me jealous. Let me get you where you need to be because you ain't saying nothing. You see, we need something to create something with. <laughs> okay, y'all didn't get it. <laughs> well, I said, we need something in order for us to create something with. But God took nothing and created something. Uh, I mean, how do we as the creation try to create something that's going to outdo the creator? Hey, we can't create nothing that he ain't already created. And so if since he already created it, then we can't put it up there next to him. And that's what makes God upset when we try to take some stuff that we create and try to put it up there next to the creator as if we're uh, doing something that's bigger than him. He had to create created before we could even uh, mess with it. He had to create it before we can even use it. He had to create it. What is it that man has created that God uh, has not already created? You talk about uh, that man who took peanuts and made peanut butter, but you got to understand that God created the peanuts. Uh, I wish I had some help in here uh, today. You got to understand uh, who it is that you're holding on for. It is God, the imperable. Uh, Isaiah said the work and molds and image. The goldsmith overspreads it with gold and the silversmith uh, casts silver chains. Uh, whoever is too impoverished and look, he's even trying to say uh, there in verse number 20, whoever is too impoverished to make that type of contribution, look at what they do. They go try to get a piece of wood and then find somebody who can carve it real good and try to put it up next to God. All they want to make sure that it didn't topple over and the reason why they were concerned about it toppling over because the history uh, that Isaiah uh, is helping them to see is that when somebody else got a God that they said, y'all know that story about the Philistines when the children of Israel allowed the Ark of the Covenant to be captured by the Philistines and they put uh, that Ark of the Covenant alongside on the shelf and put their God uh, on the shelf next to it and they got up the next morning and they God had toppled over. They went down, picked it up, put it back on the shelf uh, and it came back the next day. It had toppled over. They did it one more time, picked it up, put it on the shelf. I wish I had some Bible readers in here. And they came back, and not only this time was it toppled over, but it was broke. I'm here to tell you that you can't set nothing up inside God and think that it's got to stay. You can't create an image and think your image uh, should be up there with God. I wish I had two or three of y'all in here that don't mind testifying that I can't put nothing uh, up beside my God because my God is enough all by himself. He don't don't need my help. He don't need uh, what I can give him. I'm not concerned about what I can give him other than praise and worship because all he asks of me is to give him praise and worship. He didn't ask me to give him a wooden statue or some metal object to bow down to. Isaiah says as I'm moving fastly to get to my seat, he says, have you not known have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundation of the earth? You got to know that God is incomparable. As I hurry through, as I hurry through, not only do you have to know who, the cre who is the creator, you got to know who is 
the incomparable God. But lastly, you got to know that if you're on hold for God, who is in control? Yeah, yeah, that's, that, that, that's it. Uh, that's the bottom line. God is in control. That, 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 that's what you got to know. I, I said God is in control. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he's in such control that it don't matter what nobody else does or says. If God don't say it, it ain't going to happen. If God don't orchestrate it, it will not be. I'm here to help somebody understand that God is in control. Here it is. It's in your Bible. Look at verse number 22. It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. That suggests that you and I ain't nothing. When God is sitting up here and he's looking down, uh, he's looking at and we look like grasshoppers to him. Uh, it's God who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. He's in control and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. He's in control. He brings the princesses to nothing. He's in control. He makes the judges of the earth useless because he's in control. He's in such control that he controls everything. Uh, uh, y'all do remember in y'all's Bibles, come on, I need to get some Bible because y'all sitting here like y'all ain't Bible readers, but you do know that he is control in control and everything is under his control. Uh, it is a, a time when Elijah the prophet uh, prayed unto God and God shut up the heavens and didn't let it rain for over three years. Why? Because he's in control. There's a time when the disciples disciples was in a boat and they uh, went down and woke Jesus up and he got up and he told the winds to stop blowing and the waves to lay down. Why? Because he's in uh, control. Y'all do remember those Hebrew boys Meshach, uh, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Uh, they went in the fire but the fire didn't burn them. The fire couldn't burn them because God is in control. I wish I had some witnesses in here that don't mind testifying uh, that God is is in control. You know, David, that little shepherd boy went down to the battlefield uh, and, uh, and Saul tried to give him his, uh, his armor to go fight a giant uh, that was defaming the name of the Most High God. Uh, and David said to Saul, I don't need what you got. Uh, I need what God gave me because God is in control. You do know that God is in control, don't you? Uh, yeah, because the Bible says says uh, uh, that David picked up five smooth stones uh, and he went and he round that uh, slang up and when he let it go, uh, uh, I'm convinced uh, that God got in the smooth stone uh, and turned it into a jet stone uh, and increased the volume of the stone uh, and then got direction to the stone, uh, took his GPS and said uh, that your destination is in the forehead uh, of the giant uh, and the record is uh, that, that, that Goliath fell down uh, David took his sword uh, and cut his head off because God is in control is he in control of your life I come by to tell you that if you can see God through the eyes of God then you'll know that God is in control and because God is in control uh, Isaiah said uh, don't hang up you don't want to hang up because they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they should mount up on wings uh, as eagles they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. If God got you on hold, don't you hang up. You just hold on. If God got you on hold, don't you give up. Just hang on. If God's got you on hold, 
Don't you worry about your situation because God, he's in control. And this is what I love about him. And this is where the text blesses me. The children of Israel was going to be on hold for 70 years. But in 70 years, God didn't forget about them. In 70 years, God did not abandon them. In 70 years, God continued to watch over them. In 70 years, God was still in control of them. And when the 70 years was up, God went and released them and took them back home. Is there anybody in here that's waiting on your release? Is there anybody in here that's waiting on your breakthrough? Is is there anybody in here that's waiting on your deliverance because God is in control and because he is I am because he's my way maker I'm gonna make it because he's my burden bearer I'm not gonna give in because he's my heavy load sharer I can walk another step because he's my getting up in the morning I'll see a brand new day because he's my lay me down at night I can sleep in peace is there anybody in here that realize that because he is I am that's why he told Moses tell the children when they ask you who I am I tell them who I am when they ask you who sent you I am I said I am I am that I am I'm your everything I all that you need I'm more than you need I'm your everything is there anybody in here that understands that God is your everything don't worry about what it looks like God is still your everything don't worry about what others say God is still your everything is there anybody in here that's why I'm done I'm done that's why the songwriter says the splendor of a king clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice let all the earth rejoice he wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice trembles at his voice how great is our God sing with me how great is our God all I need how great how great is our God come on come on you know what come on come on the splendor of a king Clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And we'll see how great, how great is our God. Come on, here's number two. H H he stands. And time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead three and one, Father, Spirit, and the Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb, how great is our God, 
sing with me how great is our God. I want to see how great, how great is our God. Come on, here we go, here we go. The name above all names, worthy of our praise. My heart will sing how great is our God. One more time. Your name's above all names. You're worthy of our praise. And my heart, how great is our God. Come on, we're done, we're done, we're done. How great is our God. Sing with me how great. The doors of the church is open. The doors, the doors of the church is open. The doors of the church are open. Door is open. The door is open. Amen. Amen. That concludes this series. What you need to know. Whatever you do, if God puts you on hold, don't you hang up. God has something for you. God's going to deliver you. If you can just hang in there and hold on, God is saying, don't you hang up on me, because if you hang up on me, then you have nothing. But if you hold on, I'm going to show up. And when I show up, I'm going to show out. When I show up, because when I pick up on the other line, I'm going to give you the confidence to let you know that I'm still your God and you're still my child. I'm still able. And I think that's what you need to know deep down in your soul. Whatever you're faced with, whatever you're dealing with, if you own hold, just keep on holding on because what you need to know is that God is able. I don't know if he's going to deliver me, says the Hebrew boys. I'm not going to, I don't know whether he's going to get me out of this fire, but what I do know is that he's able. Is there anybody in here besides me that knows that God is able? He's able to do any and everything but fail he's able amen amen and amen today is the third sunday and it is our lord's supper sunday the old saints used to sing i know it was the blood i know it was the blood I know it was the blood that saved me. We do this as a symbol of obedience unto God until he comes. If you have not been served the elements, if just raise your hand. If you have not been served, one of the deacons will be happy to serve you. Has so everyone been served? Everyone has the elements. Come on, I know. I know.
Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God, we love you so much. We are asking now your blessings upon this representation of your broken body and your spilled blood on Calvary. God, we are asking that you would allow it to be spiritual food to our very souls. We pray, God, that in being obedient, you will be pleased with our obedience and that you would put a hedge of protection all around us as we continue to wait for your return. We ask that you would bless everyone that's partaking today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, y'all know each and every third Sunday I ask you to pray for yourself. This is a time for you to pray for you, not to pray for your spouse, for your family, for your children, for your grandchildren, but pray for yourself. And uh, if you can't think of nothing to pray for, then you ought to at least tell the Lord, thank you for waking you up this morning. For the Bible tells us that as often as we do this, to do it in remembrance of Jesus. That's Jesus' words and not mine. He says, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. I often ask us, what do you remember about Jesus in your life? If you would begin to really go down the corridors of your memory and begin to look at and remember Jesus in your life, then it will make you shout while you're sitting right here, right now, because somebody would declare that if it had not been for Jesus in my life, I wouldn't be here. If it had not been for Jesus in my life, I wouldn't have what I have. If it had not been for Jesus in my life, I wouldn't be in the state or station of life that God has permitted me to be in. So as you bow in silent prayer, we ask that you would pray for yourself. Let us pray together. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now let us eat and drink together. The Bible says they went out into the garden. We are going our respective ways. Always remember that if God's got you, he's got you. Whether you're on hold or whether he's actively talking to you on the line. Keep in mind that God answers prayers of his children. God always answers the prayers of his children. Sometimes he says yes. Sometimes he says no. And then sometimes he said, I'm going to put you on hold. Wait till I pick it up. Sometimes he says wait. And so keep in mind as you go throughout the rest of your life, you want to see God through the eyes of God. And if you can just do that, then you can see your way through. Amen? It's offering time. Amen. As we do each and every Sunday, as you know, I tell you, I don't know your finances. I don't know what God has blessed you with. But I do know that everybody has something that they can contribute. It's not equal giving. It's not matching giving. It is equal sacrifice. However the Lord has purposed in your heart, 
for you to give. Do that and watch God bless your life immensely. Why? Not because of the amount you gave, but because of your obedience unto him. It is all about being obedient. For those that have already sent theirs in, God bless you. Thank you so much. For those that have given, I saw three or four of y'all who have already given via Giblify this morning. Thank you. For those that sent yours by someone you know that was coming to the in-person worship experience, God bless you as well. Hopefully everybody has had an opportunity to get your offering together. Again, don't be ashamed. If you give, give if I hold up your device, hold up your offering, get it in your hand. Whatever God, however God has blessed you, however he has blessed you, whatever God has done for you, don't be ashamed of what God is doing and will continue to, to do. Let us pray together. God, we ask your blessings now upon the hand that holds the offering that will be given in this worship experience. God, I pray that you would bless that individual, that you would bless their family, that you would bless their home, that you would bless their community, that you would bless everywhere their feet might try, that you would bless their going in and bless their coming out, that they might radiate, God, your spirit, that a dying world, God, would know that they are your child. Now, God, I pray that you would bless the offering that would be taken up today, God. Uh, bless it so that it can be used for kingdom building here on earth, that we will continue to run up the king's highway, holding high the blessed name banner of Jesus Christ, telling a dying world that there is a reality in serving a true and a living God. We ask all of these blessings in the mighty, miraculous, and matchless name of Jesus. Amen. All right, all those on my right and your left, all those on my left and your right, if you would stand, we are prepared to go home. Amen. Sister Smizer just gave me our $100 for the Thanksgiving offering. However, God's going to bless you to do that. Please do that. But I will let you know we're leading the way. I never ask you all to do anything that we're not willing to do ourselves. So here is our $100 for the Thanksgiving and Christmas donation. You do as God leads you to do. All right. God, again, how we love you, we adore you, we magnify your most holy and righteous name. God, we thank you for reminding us that if you are the one that puts us on hold, then we will never hang up on you. We will hold on for as long as it takes to get an answer that comes from you. We thank you, God, for being our God. And we thank you for permitting us to be your children. We thank you, Father, for loving us even when we didn't have sense enough to love ourselves. We thank you, Lord, for being our doctor and our lawyer. We thank you for being our company keeper. We thank you for being a father and a mother, a sister and a brother. 
We thank you, God, for walking with us each and every step of the way. And God, when the road gets too rough, we thank you because you pick us up and carry us over the rough and rocky places. We thank you for being our God. So we're going to hold on, God, until we hear from you. We're going to hold on until we get an answer. We're going to be like Jacob. And we're going to not let you go until you bless us. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, with the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, let it rest, root, and abide with us now, henceforth, and forevermore. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Have a good week. We'll see you Wednesday, 12 noon, Sunday School Lesson, hosted by the Reverend Keith Williams and the Reverend David Dowell. And then Thursday, 6.30 p.m., Truthful Transformation Thursday. I will be your host. Have a good week.